All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can estimate the tracking plot for a BGBB model. And in the process, I'm going to talk through some of the theory behind how it works. So remember, the four parameters of the BGBB are alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. Alpha and beta govern the purchase propensity while customers are alive. Gamma and delta measure the propensity of customers to remain with the firm. So imagine that I just set all of these values equal to 0.5 originally. Then because this is a generative model, we can generate data for a simulated cohort. So imagine that uh, I generate data for, call it 5,000 individuals. So I'm just going to go down here, three, four, five. And again, the idea is that I can simulate all of these customers buy and die coins from these beta distributions. So to simulate P for this first uh, simulated customer, I just go beta.in ran alpha. beta. And then I can do the same thing to simulate theta, which is the propensity of customer to churn given that they had been alive in the previous period. That's also just going to be beta.in ran two parameters of the second beta distribution. Now what I can do then is just copy this formula down, and this is giving us simulated P's and thetas for all of our customers, so just random draws from these two beta distributions. And the idea behind a tracking plot is it basically is giving us the probability that a customer will make a purchase in a particular time period week by week. So all this represents is uh, the probability of making a purchase in period T, given P and theta. And we want to do that in all the weeks. So week number one, week number two, all the way up. So let's just take this out, you know, 77 weeks. Now the probability that a customer will make a purchase in a week is the probability that they're alive in that week multiplied by the probability that they purchase given that they're alive. So the probability that they're alive in week T is the same formula that we've been using for quite a while. It's just 1 minus theta to the T. So 1 minus theta raised to the power of T. And then what I'm going to multiply this by is P. So this is the probability they're alive, and I'm going to multiply this by P, just like that. Do this over, copy and paste the formula, and then I'm going to get these same numbers for every single one of the people in the cohort. And then remember, the big thing that we want to get is, what is the cohort level distribution? So cohort ability of purchase. This is the tracking plot. So again, this was P. This is theta. This is the probability of purchase in week number one. And the cohort is right over here. So I just kind of average the probabilities of purchase in week P uh, across all the different time periods. So I'm just going to copy and paste this formula over. And this is what we see. Alt I H. And yeah, we can see this nice smooth curve. Now, in theory, we can estimate our model then by comparing this tracking plot to the tracking plot that we obtained previously 
you the actual one. You just minimize the difference between the two. And there's nothing that would prevent us from doing that, but it would be computationally intensive because we'd have to have a large number of samples and there's going to be the simulation noise. So if I were to pull up this plot, I'm just going to pull this up again. Let's see, I'm going to pull this over here. If I were to recalculate a bunch of times, you're going to see you know, this line's moving about. So, so in theory, there's going to be simulation noise in here too. Now, the great thing is there's actually a closed form expression for for this, which is just a function of alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and the time period that we're in. I stuck it up over here. <laughs> so essentially, uh, we can see there's this formula. It is fairly long. Again, I could explain this easily, but all this represents is the unconditional expected cumulative number of repeat purchases by week number T per cohort member. And so I can compare that to the incremental distribution by um, essentially taking first differences. The probability you make a purchase in week T is the cumulative probability you make a purchase in week T minus the cumulative probability that you made a purchase in week number T minus one. So if I just kind of take this, I'm going to pull this down way over here. And this is the simulated answer. So I'm just going to kind of pull this over a few rows so that they're lined up. This is closed form probability of purchase. This is the simulated one. simulated out in front over here. And so we can then compare these two just to make sure that they are telling us the same thing. And we can see that they are. So one of them is going out many more periods than the other one. Kind of delete this chart over here. But if I were to kind of take the simulated results out further or conversely take the closed form expression and remove all these extra periods, which I'm going to do. We are going to see that they come perfectly in line with each other. So again, this is giving us confidence that the closed form expression is the correct one. So now what we're going to do when we move to estimation is we're just going to use the closed form expression for the tracking plot and minimize the expected distance between that and the actual tracking plot.